Welcome to a morning movie news special report. What's that mean? It means that news is broken that's so big it can't wait till morning. And that news is two huge casting rumors coming out of Hollywood about two huge comic book properties. The first is none other than Batman for the new Man of Steel quasi-sequel, which is going to feature uh, Batman heavily, as, as we've all heard already. And you've also probably heard the rumors that they want a Batman who's like in his 40s, because they want to kind of go for the Dark Knight Returns vibe, where... Uh, Batman schools uh, Clark Kent, and, but I, I don't know why age has anything to do with it. They're the same age in that story in the Dark Knight. Uh, they're basically the same age in the Dark Knight Returns. So, uh, and we all know that at any age, Bruce could totally school Clark. Uh, I don't totally believe that. I guess I am a big Clark Kent fan as well, but uh, I don't. I have no idea why Batman needs to be older. But anyway, that's the direction they want to go in. They want a Batman in his 40s. So, who's the top pick? That would be none other than Josh Brolin. Uh, with all due respect to Josh Brolin and his fan base, which, by the way, is quite small, that's a horrible choice. I think you'd be hard-pressed to come up with a worse choice, although Zack Snyder has proven me wrong, as you'll see by the rest of this list, where they get some of them even worse than this. Uh, Josh Brolin, I'm not saying he's a bad actor, I think he's a great actor. I don't think he has the jawline to play Batman, maybe he could pull off Bruce Wayne. Uh, I think that he just does not, I just don't see him as this character. Uh, I, I just think he's he's a mistake. And but the biggest problem is is that from a business standpoint, you know, the whole reason they're bringing Batman in is to help them with their box office. You know, Batman has a bigger draw. But I would say that Josh Brolin's you know box office poison is so much in the other direction that they'll probably just cancel it out then, and he'll cancel out the Batman draw, and there'll be no point in really putting Batman in the movie. Uh, I just think that Josh Brolin doesn't have the image that goes along with the Dark Knight, uh, and it's just it's just not a good idea. All right, so. That, but he's apparently Zack Snyder's first choice. And I have the notes here for the rest of the people. But uh, number two is Ryan Gosling. Now, you know how excited I am about the idea of Ryan Gosling being Batman. If you've watched this channel on a regular basis, you know that I consistently bring it up. And some of you have doubted me and said it was ridiculous. But as you can see, Zack Snyder did something right and agrees with me. I think uh, Ryan Gosling would be fantastic, so much so that when I interviewed him at the junket for The Place Beyond the Pines, I even said... You should be Batman. And you know, I have to say, he wasn't totally against the idea. He felt that all the good characters were taken. But they open up again, as we can see. And I think he should totally be Batman. I think he'd be a great choice. And when you have Ryan Gosling and Henry Cavill in the same movie, you're going gonna to get a lot of women to go, too. So that'll certainly help the film. Obviously, Ryan Gosling is not in his 40s. But the whole idea is kind of silly anyway. So I don't think they should be casting based on that. All right. So as you can see, I'm still extremely sick. Okay. And my Dayquil is not working at all. All right, Ryan Gosling, he's the second choice. Next one is, uh, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his name, Joe Manganiello. He is uh, the, from, the fireman from Magic Mike, and he's plays Alcide on True Blood. Yes, I do watch True Blood. And, you know, he seems like a really sweet guy. He's a good actor. But, and they even said that Zack Snyder was considering him for Superman, which I also think is a horrible idea. I, maybe he could play Craven the Hunter, uh, but I don't really see Joe Manganiello in a comic book movie. I guess, I think that... Zack Snyder is distracted by his build. You know, he has a superhero type build. Uh, and good for him. That's the whole reason he was in Magic Mike. Uh, why he's on True Blood. But, you know, just because you have the look of a superhero doesn't mean you can play one. And I think that, you know, they build these muscles into the suits anyway. And any actor with the right uh, training and the right people that the studio pays for can totally get into shape. So I wouldn't cast based on that. I, I think that uh, he would be really a bad choice. And talk about not bringing in. I think. While Ryan Gosling would bring a lot of women in, uh, I think that Joe Man uh, Manganiello, and maybe because he was in Magic Mike, but not totally, but either way, you kind of turn the Batman-Superman movie into like its own superhero Magic Mike at that point with Henry Cavill and Joe Manganiello. When you think of that lineup, it's totally like stripper version of the superhero of World's Finest, and I, I think that you might turn off some guys with that. All right, next up, I actually kind of like this next idea. Richard Armitage. He plays Thor in Oakenshield in the Hobbit films, and he is a huge BBC actor. Uh, and he has, also has a very large female following. But I think he kind of has the seriousness of a Bruce Wayne. I think he has a very different look than Henry Cavill, which I like. Oh, by the way, I feel Josh Brolin looks too much like Henry Cavill. That's also a little bit distracting. But I think that uh, Richard Armitage has a very different look. Uh, and also, I think he has a good ability to play a leader, some, a quiet leader. And of course, that's, you know, that's Batman in a nutshell. So I actually would be okay with Richard Armitage playing the role. I think he'd be pretty interesting. And we would have another British Batman. Okay, the next one is such an odd choice. Max Martini. If you've seen Pacific Rim, he plays uh, the dad, you know, um, the one who, who teams up, you know, with that, that gung-ho guy. Uh, he's, he has red hair, reddish hair. 
and uh, he's one of the pilots, and he ends up hurting himself really bad, so Idris Elba has to fill in for him. That's the guy. A red-headed Batman, I mean, that's just, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they got me to accept Lois Lane, but they shouldn't get cocky about this. I mean, I don't know. And I think that he, again, you're basically, he's largely a television actor. To Again, you, you just can't make that, I mean, you have to have some respect for the character of Batman. I mean, you can't just put the cape and cowl on anybody and have an instant, you know, success. There is some something to who's in wearing it. So I think that's just a ridiculous choice, and I can't, I can't even believe that's even being considered. I don't even want to discuss it. It's so stupid. Okay, the last choice is super weird, and that's Matthew Good. He played Ozymandias in uh, Watchmen, a Zack Snyder film, obviously, and also he was most recently in Stoker as uh, Charlie. You know, Matthew Good is very good at being creepy. I think he'd be better off playing like one of Batman's villains. He's very good at that. Uh, I, I think, like, you know, he, I know I just said that whole thing about muscles, but Matthew Good has such a slight build that I have a problem believing him being able to take on Superman no matter what uh, was in his utility belt. And also, I just think he would give Batman that slightly creepy vibe. You know, you'd be like, uh, maybe he is a little crazy. I mean, there's a fantastic story, um, comic book Batman Earth 1, which reimagines Batman a lot in his universe, and one of the things they reimagine is that Martha Wayne was in Arkham from the Arkham family. And so mental illness runs in her family, and so that maybe might be why Batman puts on the, the cape, why he would dress up like that, because he comes from a line of people who are mentally ill, and that might be a little bit in him. And I thought that was fascinating. I thought that was a fascinating justification for why he would become Batman. Uh, and, you know, maybe Matthew Good could play that up if they were going to go in that direction. I doubt they're going to do that kind of character building in a Man of Steel sequel that Batman happens to be in, unless he's just going to totally hijack the film. But uh, I think Matthew Good... I can see where Zack Snyder's coming from there. Uh, he's well-intentioned, but I think he's misguided. So, who do you like the most out of that? My, my thoughts are Ryan Gosling, obviously, or Richard Armitage. I'd be cool with that as well. But I think this whole 40s thing, as I said, is ridiculous. All right, so what's the other casting rumor? This one is even stupider. I don't know what's happening over there this weekend. This is the idea that Miles Teller from The Spectacular Now would play Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four reboot from Josh Strank. Uh, I think that's ridiculous. As you know, if you watch this channel again regularly, one of the things I bring up all the time is that I think the Fantastic Four needs to skew older. It needs to be an adult team of superheroes. I don't know why they keep picking all these people in their 20s. It's just, uh, it makes all the movies seem the same. How is this any, how are you going to make the Fantastic Four any different than X-Men? Uh, you know, I think that adding a level of sophistication and playing up the science angle is really the way to go. I also think that, you know, Reed Richards is a very distant, uh, serious person, and that is like, not Miles Teller at all. I don't. Maybe, I'm sure Miles Teller has wonderful acting ability, but you know, it's like it's like when you take Chris Evans and you try and make him serious. What's the point? The the actor's whole appeal is their ability with comedy, and their uh, really great personality. So why would you? It was stupid to muzzle Chris Evans, and it's stupid to mu uh, muzzle Miles Teller unless they're going to change the personality of Reed Richards uh, and make him more of a hotshot scientist. Which I don't know. I mean, then what are you even calling it Fantastic Four then? Uh, and as you know, Michael B. Jordan is rumored to be Johnny Storm. That rumor is still very strong, not going away. And he didn't refute it when I interviewed him, which makes me feel that that's probably what's going to happen. And then uh, Sue Storm, they're saying it's going to be Allison Williams, uh, Brian Williams' daughter from Girls. And I think if she was a little older, she would be a good choice. I think she has, like, a scientific feel to her. Uh, you know, she seems very smart. I don't know if she actually is smart, but she seems smart. Uh, so I could see that working. But, you know, again... A very young cast. I don't see any. I mean, you're just gonna you're just getting X Men light at this point, and it makes me wonder. We haven't heard anything about the thing. Uh, perhaps he's gonna be CGI. Maybe nobody wants to play him, you know, or you know, maybe they'll they'll find someone like a uh, they'll bring someone from the outside who just wants to break into Hollywood. Like Dave Bautista takes a lot of these kind of roles, but he obviously can't do it because he's uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy. But maybe they can find another wrestler or somebody like that, or a mixed martial arts fighter. All right, so. Those are the two big, huge stories. What do you think? Do you think Hollywood's as crazy as I do? Do you like any of these choices, actually? Uh, and do you agree that Fantastic Four... You know, it's funny. I think Batman should not skew older, but I think Fantastic Four should. Uh, what are your thoughts? Write them down below. And then also, I wanted to say... Uh, the other thing I wanted to add today is that YouTube has introduced a fantastic new tool. It's called uh, YouTube Audience, and it allows me to see who is the most engaged uh, in uh, Beyond the Trailer videos and who watches them the most. And so I thought a fun thing to do is, uh, you know, I'm going to keep, be keeping an eye on that. And once a month, uh, whoever is the most engaged, uh, I will invite on for a uh, person for a one-on-one -on -one uh, interview 
via Skype to talk about what's going on with movies right now and your thoughts. And I think that would be a fun idea. So, uh, it, you know, engagement means like watching as many videos, uh, commenting, liking, sharing, stuff like that. You know, it's a weird science that YouTube doesn't really give the recipe for. But uh, it's interesting, and we're gonna, I'll be posting that, and you know, it changes every day, but I'll be looking at it every day to see who's consistently towards the top. And then, uh, so make sure you have a good Skype connection, uh, and a good internet connection, and we'll, we'll do a Skype interview. Okay, I think that'll be a fun thing to do. It'll be nice to reward someone who is that engaged with the videos. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this special report from Morning Movie News, and uh, stay tuned for other videos soon. Well, you can watch these right now. Bye.